So for me, looking at deal making, being in the position of owning Togus, and I started several other companies, uh, we were st- we grew really quickly when I took over Togus in two thousand from two thousand eight. We were flat through, through the recession, and then in nine through thirteen, we grew four hundred percent. Um, so I was all eyes on the business, and I was not an entrepreneur. I didn't feel I was because I was given the opportunity of being a family member to, to take over the company. So I always wanted to show that I can do it on my own, and I decided to start several other companies. But when I really looked at the deal-making side of things, one was to make sure I had the right team in place, the right foundation in place for our company, because I've seen just through my experience reading a lot of articles, whether it's in Smart Business or in Forbes or Cranes or what have you, how deals fall apart, right? And if you don't have the right team that has the experience, it's gonna, you you could actually sink your own company if you make bad deals. So when we started looking at making acquisitions or not making acquisitions and what led us to the decision was one, when you make a deal, you have to have people that have that type of experience and we didn't. In fact, I actually have looked at making making acquisitions over the past seven years. And so two things really happened that I found that were interesting. One is we're smaller company, so and I wanted to do this with our own financing rather than going to market to trying to find debt outside of traditional bank financing. So that was one obstacle. Uh, the other was the, the deals that I was looking for, whether it was tool makers or businesses that would either bolt on or enhance our injection molding business, was the, the owners of the company. Several of them were distressed, and I was in due diligence with them. But what I found is their perception of the value of the business was much higher than what the business was really worth. So in those cases, and there were seven deals we looked at, we ended up passing on them because financially it just didn't make sense. What I learned after the fact also was, again, on the personnel side, it's not just buy a company, it's how do you fold it into your existing business. And that was the, that was the approach that we were taking, was bringing a, buying a company that had capabilities that we didn't have or a market and customers that we didn't have to bring in. And we just found it was, we were just too far apart in those deals. Uh, I mean, several of the companies were insolvent, but they thought they were worth $10 million or more. But essentially, it was only the value of the assets. And when you have a seller on that side that can't get off that number, you just have to walk from those types of deals. Uh, But again, as I I think I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the right people in place, and I learned this after the fact, um, the deal can fall apart within and crumble the company because they just, you don't, you have personnel in, in within your business that have never done it. So if you have a bunch of people doing it for the first time, you don't know what you're walking into. And I got lucky. Honestly, I feel I got lucky that I didn't make those deals because I think it could have had a negative impact that we could still be feeling right now, even in a good economy, because we would have made a bad deal. There are a lot of business deals being made. We see it every day in the paper of companies being sold. And the challenge that, I, that we have seen and others have seen, especially in the, in the smaller sector, is the multiples are so high. So as a private business trying to buy another company, I'm not just competing with what the seller thinks it's worth. I'm also competing with what private equity is willing to pay for deals. And those multiples are at an all-time high. You're seeing multiples for traditional businesses that don't add you know, an overwhelming amount of uniqueness and value to the, to the market. You're seeing val- you know, deals of seven and a half to as much as 10 and a half times EBITDA, which is a really high number. And if you're funding it with your own personal capital to do that, or traditional bank financing, it's very difficult to leverage that and, and be able to make it a, a good deal, a win. So that's what we have found to be our biggest challenge right now. In deal making, whether it's working with a customer or a supplier or looking to acquire a company, it's really about as a business owner and, and just that even as an individual, you are defined by the people that you surround yourself with. And so you want to have an inner circle that's really close, that's very open and candid and honest with you, but you also want to continue to expand your professional network. So that never stops. So it's so critical as a whether you're you're in a startup company or you're you're working for a company that's already existing that wants to scale. And I, I really push this with our team, my senior management team, is getting involved in networking, going to as many networking events as possible. Now you have to manage. There's so many of them out there. Which ones make sense? Uh, but sometimes you take a flyer and go to one that you may not think makes sense, and that's where the best opportunity happens. You meet that person or you meet that right opportunity. But that is what business is, and that's what life is. 
is really about building that network that you feel is important and valuable to you and also giving back to it. You, may, you always have to pay it forward as well.